Hey guys, how's it going? Um, I just was reading my word this morning, telling Jesus that I love him, how amazing he is. And I read this portion of scripture and it really just exploded in my heart. So I just want to share it with you, encourage you to take heart, stay encouraged, keep seeking, keep pressing into God, keep worshiping Jesus. And uh, when I used to preach, I, I've, I've gotten any more like I never, I have never, I've gotten now in my life, I never judge a service by how well people respond in the service, but I judge a service how well it was if people go home and pursue Jesus and in an intimate relationship with Christ Jesus. And see, church church isn't like a bunch of um, circus monkeys on a stage trying to entertain people that are not hungry for God. <laughs> And so if you're a minister, worship leader, someone that's in ministry watching this, um, you're not just take that weight of performance off your shoulder. Listen, we're not we're not to entertain people. We're to ministers of Jesus Christ called and equipped by God and our sufficiency is from Christ Jesus. That means he makes us good enough to be a minister of God in Christ Jesus. It's nothing of our own ability or our own accord, because if it was, we would be exalted and not Christ Jesus. And that's never the case. And so. Um, and so when I make these videos, my heart for you, I say that in every video because I want I want you to have a relationship with Jesus. When nobody's looking, when the door's shut and it's just you and you know you, you know who you are, you know how you live, and uh, and he wants your secret place. He says, my father who is in the secret place, my father who sees in secret you, when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in the secret place. Why? Because it's a relationship with father. It's a relationship with dad in heaven. Because if he can have you in secret, You'll definitely live for him and open, and um, and so he wants you. He want he wants you in a secret, intimate relationship with him. Of 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 Jesus, I love you. You're amazing. You saved my life, God. And that's just your heart response to being saved by God. Um, of of him giving you righteousness and life and justifying by faith, giving you peace with God. It's all Bible scripture. But I was reading this morning and just telling Jesus that I love him. And I read this scripture. Listen to this. It says, this is Matthew chapter 16, verse 1. It says, Then the Pharisees and Sadducees came, testing him, being Jesus, asked that he would show them a sign from heaven. Well, it's not like he sealed the six, raised the dead, cleansed the leopard, opened blinded eyes, opened deaf ears. And, and so, but anyway, they come and they ask for a sign from Jesus. And he says, He answered them, When it is evening, you say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning... It will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and threatening. Listen to what he said. He said, hypocrites. Hold your finger right there if you got your Bible or phone, whatever. Listen, the word hypocrite in the Bible isn't somebody that's trying to do right and keeps making mistakes and falling. No, a hypocrite is somebody that has a twisted motive, that, they're, that they say one thing but mean another. See, there's so many sincere Christians that are trying to walk this thing out in a right relationship with God, and they're missing the mark, and they label themselves a hypocrite when their heart's really sincere, full of repentance, and they're, you're growing in a relationship with God. Give yourself grace to grow. Listen, you are growing in Christ Jesus, so if you make a mistake, get back up. And crawl back up into daddy's lap, continue to have a relationship with him. But a real hypocrite is somebody that says one thing but really means another. It's deceit. It's deception in, in the way that they act. The, the Greek word is actually a play actor. And, you know, and, and in Greek time, a, one, one person, one actor in a Greek play may wear three or four different masks. Come on, that's what a hypocrite is. It's somebody that's just got on different masks. And so he calls them hypocrites. Listen to what he says. He says, you know how to discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the times. A wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no sign shall be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. And he left them and departed. Listen, he's talking about, he, he is actually rebuking them, expecting them to discern the times. And so in that day, when we stand before our king, we stand before our Lord, this thing has shook down. He's going to say, why did you not discern the times? I expect, Jesus expects us to discern the times. He's saying, listen, you should have known. If you can discern all these other things, why could you not? I told you in my, you know what he's saying? I've told you in my word when I would be here. I've told you in my word who I'm going to be. And I've told you in my word what I'm going to be like. Come on, that's what the prophets and the law testified all of Jesus. And he's saying, and you can't even discern me being here right in front of you. The Bible says he came to his own and his own did not receive him. And the only sign they're going to be given is three days being in the earth. And then on the third day, our king of glory rose in resurrection power. Come on, and that same spirit that rose from him from the dead now dwells in you. And that spirit, the spirit of Jesus, is the spirit of prophecy. And so he's going to come. And then just a few chapters later, Matthew 24 
He begins to tell us what the signs of the time will be. And he expects us by the Holy Spirit relationship with God and allowing the Spirit to bear witness to us and through us, right, to discern the times and, and the, the things that he says, you know, there'll be wars and rumors of wars. You read it right here. It's Matthew 24. Just flip over, flip over a few more chapters. Listen, he says there, there's people are going to be, they're going to hate one another. People are going to be offended. There's going to be deception. The first thing he actually says is do not be deceived. And I'm telling you right now, if you, if you think about these things in your heart, and not just in America. In America, we're like, well, there's not famines, and there, but there is all over the world. We live in a safe society in America, but other people are not as, are not as blessed as we are. And so... And so, but all these things, all these signs that he talks about in Matthew 24 are, are for real. They're coming to pass right now. You look through the book of Revelation, a lot of these things that are, is happening, literally, Jesus is expecting us to discern and know our king is coming. I want to jump on here and say, take heart, take courage, be strengthened, be strong. Our king is coming, and he's coming back for a bride. He's coming back not for a girlfriend, and he's not coming back for somebody that had a one-night stand. He's coming back for a bride. Our king of glory is coming back for a bride that's spotless, without blame, without blemish, that's been washed with the water of the word, that's discerned the times, that says, you know what there is wars and there's rumors of wars and there is people are hating each other and people are offended and there is so much deception this progressive christianity thing that's taking the word of god watering it down and twisting it as soon as somebody says the word of god is not infallible that the word of god is fallible i'm telling you they have fallen from grace because you cannot listen to me i don't care what you think i don't care what you say you cannot separate god from his word at that point, you take your own moral standard and make it a higher standard than God's. And that's exactly what we have seen, is that people are taking their moral standard and saying, this is right, and they're exalting it above God's moral standard called the Holy Word of God that was spoken and inspired by the Holy Spirit, making a mockery. You want to blaspheme the Holy Spirit? Begin to tell him that his word is wrong. That's how you blaspheme the Holy Ghost. And then, you know, because you know what you do when people say that the word of God is not right? Do not be deceived. It's right here. It's, it's the first thing he says. When, what will the signs of these things be? What's the sign of your coming? That's what they asked him. Listen to what he said. He says, take heed that no one deceives you. That's the first thing he said. And you know where deception comes is when people stop believing the word of God. Because at that point, you cut people off from the truth. And it's the truth that sets you free. Come on, I feel like a wild man. Ah, oh, Jesus, is there, I'm trying to stay calm. Like, ah, Jesus, I'm exploding. Listen, because when you cut people off from the word, you, you eliminate the possibility for them to ever be free. And what people are doing is they're taking a feeling, emotion, a temptation, making that their identity, putting that thing on instead of the robe of righteousness, instead of peace, instead of joy, instead of the finished work. And they're not allowing the truth to ever come in and set them free. The truth of who we are in him, the truth of why he came, the truth of why you're alive. You're alive for him. You're alive to him. You're alive through him. Everything that you are is found in him and everything in your life you try to find outside of him will always leave you thirsty and will always leave you dry. Come on, do not be deceived. But all these, he expects us to see and know these things and know these signs and these times. Come on, he's expe he, he expected them. He's like, come on, you guys, you guys should know this stuff. You're the ones that have sought the word. You're the ones, but your motive and everything in your heart's twisted. That's what Jesus is telling the Pharisees and Sadducees. He's saying, the only reason you're asking me this is because your heart's messed up, man. Come on, he wasn't, Jesus, Jesus loved religious people. Come on, whether you like to hear that or not. He loved, come on, he did. It's his, it's not, it's never God's heart that anyone should perish. Come on, not one person. Come on, he didn't stick his son to a tree and Jesus paid the price that he paid so people could perish. But man, that we could have everlasting life, that we could know there is a home for me in heaven, that I'm just a pilgrim passing through. And right now, this place, I, I'm, I'm in the world, but I will never be of it. And I will discern the times because of the Holy Spirit in me. And that through relationship with God, the Spirit of Jesus is the Spirit of prophecy. And I'm get a phone call. And I am a son of God. And so be blessed today. Take heart. Take courage. I love you. Jesus loves you.